visiting the house of friendship, you fulfill your pleasure, happiness, fellowship, and learn more about service projects. Ladies and gentlemen, the house of friendship. On behalf of the people of Bangkok and the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, I'm honored to have I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all Rotarians and families worldwide. The House of Friendship has long been a special part of Rotary International Conventions, and this year is certainly no exception. It's a place for Rotarians and their guests to gather to learn and to share experiences with one another. It's a place where you can discover aspects of Rotary that you may not have known about. Above all, it's a place for Rotary fellowship and friendship, a place where you can greet old friends, make new ones, and together celebrate the best of what Rotary has to offer. As you walk through the House of Friendship, you will find information about international service projects that you may want to partner with. You will meet members of Rotary Fellowships and Rotary Action Groups that you may want to join. And you'll also find resources that will help your Rotary Club be even more effective than it is today. I think this is one of the best opening ceremonies at a house of friendship that I've ever seen. It's so colorful, it's so, uh, you know, enchanting, absolutely. And the orchids and the flowers, it makes it very, very, very special. My brothers and sisters in Rotary, one year ago, I stood before you in New Orleans and told you of my vision for the 2011-2012 Rotary year. And I asked you all to reach within, to embrace humanity, to look inside yourselves, to find the strength and the love and the selfless desire to help others, to bring those qualities out and take them forward and allow yourselves to fly. I came into this 2011-2012 Rotary year determined to make a difference, to leave Rotary stronger at the end of the year than it was at the beginning. And I believe that those goals have been met, for Rotary is stronger and our work has made the world a better place than it was a year ago. But if there's one thing I have learned in this incredible, phenomenal year, it is that the changes that I have seen and the lives that have been touched in this Rotary year, they haven't been because of me. They have been because of you because of who you are, because of what you have done, because of what you dreamt and achieved through Rotary. And when I think back on this year, on all the ways that I have seen Rotarians reaching within, I am overwhelmed with pride and with joy. And Vinota and I have had the incredible opportunity to connect with dignitaries uh, around the world. His Holiness, the Pope in Rome, whose face just lit up in a big smile when he heard that we were from Rotary. And then with the presidents and prime ministers of some 12 different other countries as well. And they are often looking of ways to engage with Rotary. For instance, in South Africa, the government minister there 
sought Rotary's engagement in spreading literacy and in controlling malaria. In Haiti, the president was seeking Rotary's support in education, and so was the prime minister in Bangladesh. And Rotarians in these countries are rising to the top. <laughs> The world doesn't need to be the way it is. This idea, the same one which drives you as Rotarians, drives our team at the Global Poverty Project. We don't have to stand idly by and lament the horrors of extreme poverty. We don't have to accept the statistics. Like Rotary, we believe that the mass mobilization of individuals can change the world. At the United Nations, the original 42 NGOs, of which you were one, accredited to the UN, now number 4,000. Rotary continues to be preeminent among them. You continue to be the voice of the people and an essential partner to the UN. Most of those governments are aided by the informed, responsible, and active civil presence of Rotary. You do this because you know it is possible to save lives and change lives. You join others, both governments and NGOs, because you know there is strength in numbers, and the challenges are greater than any one entity can solve alone. Why people are poor? This is a common question everybody asks me, and probably ask you or you ask yourself, why people are poor? And I look at all the experience that we have gathered over years and come to the same conclusion. Poverty is not created by the poor people. Poverty is created by the system. There is nothing wrong with poor people. They're as good as any other human being, as creative, as active, as ambitious as you can be. But they're still poor. So poverty is not created by the poor people. It is imposed from outside imposed by the system that we built throughout the world. That creates poverty. And I give the example of bonsai, bonsai tree, the little tree that you have in your living room. You take the best seed of the huge, big, tall tree in the forest and put it in a flower pot. It grows only this big, exact replica of the tall tree that you saw in the forest and you wonder why this tree doesn't grow as much as it should uh, do that. The reason is very simple. We didn't allow the space for the seed to grow. We gave only a flower pot. It only grew this much. If the seed was planted in the real soil, it would be as tall as the one that you saw. Poor people are bonsai people. There is nothing wrong with their seed. Simply, society never gave them the space, environment in which they could grow. Many health issues in the world are devastating because we don't have a solution yet. But the most frustrating thing are the ones of which we have a solution and not enough is being done. When I grew up in Benin, I had many friends affected by polio. It was part of a daily life, as everyone was not as lucky as me, having access to vaccination. And also at that time, most of the kids' parents refused to give them vaccination because there were rumors saying that vaccination that come from the Western world is to give us another disease. But so many lives could have been improved at the time, but they were not. What I love about the This Close campaign is that a simple goal is set. It is achievable, but it requires so much goodwill and energy. In the information age, we are used to simple solutions, creating a software, an app, and the problem is solved. But with massive vaccination, it's not the same. It's about hardware and complex transportations. We have to reach out personally, one-on-one, -on -one, to every child. We have to involve the communities at a grassroots level. 
We have to preserve the cold chain of the vaccine in very difficult conditions, mountains and war zones to cross. The solution is human, not just technological. We have to convince the parent and overcome some religious belief and convince some head of villages. So the first song I'm going to sing is a traditional thank you song. And the song goes like this. Blewik, 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 my dark pillow, blewik, my dark pillow, blewik. Gaga, gaga, come on, you're not so lio. Blewik, blewik, come on, you're not so lio. La doa si kibi da ta ta. Ladies and gentlemen, two years ago, the largest country on the Asian subcontinent was still infected with polio. Two years ago, half of the children being paralyzed by polio worldwide lived in this one country. Two years ago, skeptics and cynics around the world said this country proves polio can't be eradicated. Ladies and gentlemen, today, India is polio free. On the 23rd of February, I presented the government of India with a letter announcing that for the first time in history, India was being removed from WHO's list of countries with polio. And when the Prime Minister of India stood up a few minutes later to acknowledge this magnificent achievement, he didn't say, thank you, WHO, or thank you, UNICEF, or thank you, Bill Gates, or thank you, CDC. He said, thank you, Rotary. Rotary can help you achieve the happiness in life that you seek. You know, in India, we have a saying which gives a sage advice on life. Freely translated, it means, when you came into this world, the world rejoiced and you cried. Live your life such that when you leave the world, the world may cry, while you rejoice. Today, as I end, let me just alter that a little bit to say, we have had a great time together. Let us all rejoice together and be happy. My fellow change makers, my brothers and sisters, Vinota and I thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for reaching within to embrace humanity. And we ask you now to embrace your families, embrace your neighbors, your communities, and indeed embrace all humanity and help build a world of peace through service. Namaskar.